I'm telling the story, Kirk, about how I don't like my grandma who just died. <laughs> oh, oh, your grandma that just died? Yeah, yeah. She, yeah. So it sounds like she, family members were living in a house that she had. And she sold it without telling them. Then they were forced yeah. to leave. Yeah, yeah. Who one of like the grand, the, the, her grandchild and her, and her great grandchild. Like, uh, you know what I mean? She sold the house up under them, kept the money all to herself. Yeah, that was the nail in the coffin for me. No, um, do you go to the funeral? <laughs> It's on Wednesday. Oh, yeah. That's a uh, do you plan on performing at all? Or do you plan on going up there and <laughs> saying <laughs> words? Performing? I'm gonna just tell that story, right? Yeah. <laughs> she was she was a woman. She did this. Um no. I'm I'm not saying nothing. When when my grandma died, who I really was close to, when she passed away probably like 14 years ago, I was like 2021. 20, my mom, like, they were like, anybody want to speak? And I'm the oldest grandchild, right? And my mom was like, you better speak up there for, for your grandma. And I'm like in tears. I'm like, mom, I can't speak. I don't want to uh. speak. <laughs> she was like, somebody better get up there. And my cousin, well, he was crying too, but he was so scared of my mom. He went up there <laughs> and gave like the worst speech ever. Shut <laughs> the Probably buying. So welcome property bonics kirk now what up um this one's for the grandmas uh r.i.p to the grandmas out here uh when my grandmother passed uh i i wanted to speak at her thing but there are already so many speakers and they elected my brother to speak and then um i remember just looking back and be like i could have just said like yo i want to speak like yeah. yeah we're not we're not doing this until I speak sort of thing. Yeah. At the time it felt like, Oh, well, I, I, if maybe I'm making it about me. If I do that, I went up there, they, they needed someone to do like a, like a religious uh, scripture thing. Like one of those palms. I, I don't, I don't know if it was a palms or an Exodus. I have no clue. Um, you mean Psalm? Sure. Sure. No, that, P, that P is silent. Kirk. That, that, <laughs> that, uh, that P S L A M. I think it is that. It's, that Psalms. It's, it's, it's like pneumonia. <laughs> <laughs> they need me to do like a hot pneumonia uh, 38, 46. And um, I did a little, did some bars up there. And then um, whoever was like ordaining, I, I don't know if they ordain funerals or they just uh, proceed it. They just rushed me out right away, uh, which I was kind of bummed about. Uh, Producer Pat suggests that um, I went up there and did an Austin 316. I could have. I could have. I was wearing a Stone Cold Steve Austin shirt, so I could have been doing that without realizing it. So that's for God so loved beer and wrestling. Yeah, that's a uh, the dude that rushed me out. He almost got a Stone Cold Stunner on the way out. It's like, yo, don't don't rush me out in the midst of my grandmother's funeral. That was my best friend right there. What are you talking about? It's probably a good thing you rushed out this. You're gonna be up to talking about something. Can we all read from Psalms? <laughs> <laughs> Open your books to the to <laughs> Psalms, please. <laughs> That they could have used that. I feel like uh, I could have used some of my, uh, my public speaking skills. Uh, to, <laughs> no, I, I was a, I was a, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say I was a mess during my grandmother's funeral. Uh, during the beginning phase of it, I was like, oh man, this is, it hit me a little bit. But then afterwards, it, it uh, felt like a little celebration sort of thing. Do you think for your grandmother just passed? I know, I know you mentioned uh, you weren't on the best terms with, with this particular grandmother, but do you think that the fam, are they going to be celebrating? for her death or like the opposite way or they're going to be celebrating her life? Um, I think they're going to try to keep it positive. Okay. Cele just celebrate her life. Celebrating death is super weird. Like, I don't think anybody's going to be up there twerking, you know, but yeah. uh, <laughs> I think that, like, I don't think anybody's like, yes, death. Bro, yes. I've seen, that's a thing. I mean, I've seen those videos. I mean, that, that has been happening with Queen Elizabeth. You know what I mean? So like mm. people were like, yes, death. You know I mean? are, you go are you going to her, uh, her funeral processions? Like they're having it like worldwide. She's Queen Elizabeth. Worldwide. Yeah. Me, Alan Massenberg. Yeah. You said that sounds like you should be there. <laughs> sounds yeah, Alan Massenberg sounds like name. you should be at the Queen's funeral. I got a name that sounds like I'm the Prince of Wales or something. No, listen. Bit. I'm not supporting anything. Any any of that. Damn. I'm gonna get my I'm gonna get my jokes off. Okay. Someone that has been in charge of the monarchy for 70 years. 
that has done so much. Come on, man. I, I'm not going man, there. You already know I'm, a lot not, about her already. You know the numbers. I'm, yeah, you are, you know I get down. Like when it comes to things that I like, I will, our people, like black people throughout the diaspora, have been fucking at and like. What's the word I'm looking for? Have been like wait, you traumatized, uh, traumatized that, diaspora, murdered. but you couldn't find the word for trauma. What traumatized, <laughs> murdered, um, stole from? Like, what country hasn't she? What well, I read a I read a thing that said the British Empire ruled over every single country except for forty of them at some point. Or, and you come from that, and you kept that up throughout your. No, nah, I'm not. I'm not gonna be attending no funeral. What about yourself? You watching it? You gonna be watching BBC? They have a they have a, a, a something going on in Westchester where they're gonna be have like a band and they're gonna have like live streaming of the service. Uh, and I'm I'm not too far away, so maybe just pop in real quick. Like, yo, what up? I like the jewelry that you were wearing. Sometimes she had that. What was that? It wasn't a crown. Uh, what was the thing they had? It, it's not a ruler, but it could easily be mistaken for a ruler. Yeah. What was it? Yeah. A taff? Yeah. Sounds like you're underwater right now. Alan has been muted uh, by the Zoom, and uh, we are being watched uh, by uh, whoever runs uh, the internet. So if we're muted, me, easy, I could hear you now. Was that muted? No, it sounded like you were underwater for a little bit. It's the queen. She's haunting me. Yeah, a little bit, probably. We are yeah, talking no. greasy about the queen right now. I, listen, I honestly, look, honestly, can you tell me the positive things that she's done? I have no idea what the people do. I, I think that whole like royal family, I, I think it's just like representation. There's like, oh, we're we're the face of this. And I think they have pull and power just from like their influence. But I don't I don't think they actually do anything in regards like policy. Um, like, I think they're like they're buddy buddy with the prime minister. So they probably have influence that way. So no, but the short answer is no. I have no clue. No clue. Um, they wear flock clothes. They may just be models, for all I know. So okay, here's my question. How so like Jamaica, for instance? I'm pretty well, sure well, I'm pretty sure Jamaica's still under British rule, right? Yeah. And I, I wish I could tell you like the whole uh parts of it. Unfortunately, I don't know, but yeah, there's 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 the Jamaican part to it. How does that happen? How can the queen fly over there, run things, if she's not even British government? How does that? I don't understand that. How does it happen? Uh, it's just uh, ramifications of uh, uh, colonizing that has ran through years and years. And I don't know if they necessarily have influence on Jamaican government. I'm, I'm sure maybe they, again, their influence runs worldwide. But I don't know if it's as heavy as it would be in like in Britain. But yeah, I'm sure in some ways. I said, um, Jamaican Jamaica pays them taxes. That makes okay. sense. I mean, we did that. That's why we threw that tea overboard. Oh, uh, Pat knows more about Jamaica than me on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Pat's over there blasting Beanie Man. Like, why don't you know this, Kirk? Oh, wait, no. He said, no, I was saying the U.S. The U.S. The U.S. pays Britain taxes still. We still pay them. We do. I had no idea. I don't know. If you're wondering where your tax money is going towards, you're thinking it's going towards an elementary school uh, for uh, children in need. Nah. It's going to the queen. It was. That's why. Not. She's not here anymore. I have no emotional connection uh, <laughs> to, to the queen. Uh, I, the royal family. I, 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 I think a lot of times we compare them to like the Kardashians in a lot of ways. It's just like they're, uh, people are just fascinated uh, by them, but they're not necessarily doing anything beyond the major influence that they have. Um, and I guess you could say like, oh, well, they actually are doing something if their influence is that heavy, but I have no connection to them. I, I, I remember things that have happened. Like I remember when Princess <laughs> Diana died, um, I got mail and uh, I just spoiled it for the the viewers. I do have AOL. Uh, I was about so to say, listening like, to this right now. It's in like it's in 2002. What is this? That's, that's <laughs> I keep saying I'm going to switch over to Gmail, um, but I never do. I think I'm just going to keep it that way. Um, <laughs> Only Kurt got a Hotmail. <laughs> oh, gosh. Got a Yahoo yeah. account still? <laughs> That's my burner account. That's the uh, the Property Bonics page. If you want to find us, it's propertybonics.yahoo.government. Uh, 
Kirk still uses his college email. <laughs> that's true. Uh, <laughs> that's, I should actually check that. Yeah, it's been about two weeks, man. What have you been up to? I haven't talked to you in a while. Bro, I've been in the pits. I am finally coming out of it. I have been down and out for the last two weeks. Damn. I was thinking, I was like, do I want to say anything on the podcast or do I just want to not? But I, I will speak about it because I'm good now. Okay. Like, everything's good. First thing happened, transmission on my car broke. Oh, goodness. My tranny slipped. I can say that and not get canceled. Um, Like, that happened. So that put me in a hole. And you know I use my car a lot, like, right. driving. So, like, I was on ice. I was just sitting down for, like, a week. Were you in New York or Pennsylvania? Pennsylvania. Oh. So I was on. I couldn't do nothing. You know what I mean? Um, got my car back. Next thing that it was two things. Two things. So the second thing, I I'm gonna just say it. I've uh-huh. seen my best joke on live national TV, and I didn't say it. What? Oh no. Your best joke, my like best a former joke. joke or like a current best joke. My closer. Oh my goodness. Butt bread joke. What? Yes. Damn. It was it was done well. It was done just like I wrote it. Um well, where do you see this? Was, um I don't even, I'll tell you I'll tell you where and who after we record. I don't even want to get them shine. Shout out to them. They're very funny. I don't think they stole it from me. Okay. So I want to put that out there. Um so look, I met a comedian. I performed with him. I performed with him on Sway in the Morning show nice. six years ago. Um, this is before I even had the joke, right? This is the one time I've ever met him, ever performed with him, and that was it. And years later, the, the butt bread incident happened to me when my daughter made me a sandwich with two pieces of the butt bread, and I immediately made a joke about it and been working on it and telling it for years. Right. Last week, somebody sent me a... a a message like, yo, look at this. Buddy saying a joke. So I get on there. I'm like, wow. I'm like, dang. But like, I know he didn't steal it from me. Like, I know he didn't. You know what I mean? What? Because I didn't, I, I only performed with him one time. That's before I had the joke, years before I had the joke. So you're, like, you're, you know, you haven't posted that joke like online like that. Nope. I yeah. have never posted a dead joke online. You know what I mean? So uh-huh. my girl, my girl was like, she was like, no, he definitely stole that joke. I'm like, I'm like, no, he didn't. Like, he didn't steal a joke from, from me. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like that happened to him, too. He made a joke about how his wife was showing him that she hates him. And this is what she did. And I was like, yo, I think that, that he just lived that, too. You know what I mean? There, was it uh, how did you what were some of the similarities and what were some of the differences that made you recognize that it wasn't? A stolen joke, but that the parallels were there. I know it wasn't stolen because he never seen me do it. Unless right. he stole it from someone else who stole it from me, and he never seen me do the joke. Yeah. And my friend, my friend said to me, he was like, "Well, did you steal it from him when you met him six years ago?" <laughs> and, I was, and I was like, "No, like this, it, this happened to me. Like years later, this happened to me." You both are just getting hate from people that you love. That's just a similar <laughs> thing that you're you're experiencing. So look, look, man, like, it was really funny. Like, I don't have a problem with him, but it, it definitely, because this is, where I, this is where I have been at, Kirk, for a few months now. I have been leaning on that joke heavily, like, meaning I'll be doing, like, a 10-minute set. Like, I get a lot of 10-minute sets in, in the city, 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there. And, like, I know, like, the last three minutes is that joke. Yeah. And I was using it as a crutch, like, because what it was doing was I wasn't writing you closers i was writing good jokes but i wasn't writing closers you know what i mean like this joke had a callback this joke had tags this joke had everything act outs it had everything in it yeah food it had, it had everything it had hatred it had everything everything yeah I mean, it was relatable it was funny it was cute but like so i, I was th- i was thinking before this happened like yo i need to stop using it as at least as much on short sets to Work on newer closers and get better. Yeah, but I but I didn't do that. I didn't ever do it. But now I I I'll, I'll never tell a joke again. Never. I'll never tell it again. Damn, bro, that's pretty strong. You feel that I'll way? Never I'll never tell it again. 
Unless I, I, I can't. I can't. Where it was shown, I can't, bro. It's, it's on TV, TV. Like, TV, I can't. TV. Oh, like, I, it goodness. was. Was this on TBS? This shit like on ABC. Like, this shit like TV, TV. Oh, my goodness. Like, that's like no cable TV. That's it's like, like TV. T- everybody got it. Oh, my gosh. That's like turn on a television at mechanics. They don't have cable. They're going to have just the basic channels. They're Man, forget it. I'll say it. I'll say it because like I told you, I don't think he stole it from me. He's a good guy. Mike E. Winfield. Mike E. Winfield told a great butt bread joke on America's Got Talent. Oh, my goodness. Mike he is e. in the Winfield. finals. He's in the finals. Shout out to Mike. It's uh, a great joke. He's killing it. It sounds like he's giving out props to the queen as well with a name like that. That's a good name. Um, <laughs> You're killing it. Listen, man, like, I- I'm sitting here thinking, like, don't want to say his name. Yeah, I'll say his name because, like I said, I don't think he stole it from me. I just think right. that we had similar things happen in our lives. He took it. He's on TV, and he's murdering it. Like, that's what comedy is. you got to get your best jokes out there before somebody else does, essentially. Yeah, and that name sounds – I think I know who that is. I'm, I'm just looking up as well. Um, but I'm pretty sure I know who – Mike is. I was double checking if it's the same one. That's frustrating, man. I mean, because it's I I like that you have that perspective of recognized. Yeah, no, this oh shit. Yeah, Mike, of course. Um, yeah, it's it's cool that you have the perspective of recognize like this is not a combative, they took the joke sort of thing like that. And parallels like this can happen. Uh it's just it can be frustrating when it's one that you're like currently using. I know you mentioned like it being uh uh a crutch, but I don't know, I see it as like that's that's just a good joke that you have. That's something that you have in your repertoire. And especially if you're showcasing for a show, not a bad thing to use. So when something like this happens, man, that's rough. It's but it forces me, like I said, like shout out to Mike, yo. I don't like I can't wait to run to him again so I can tell him this story, right? But <laughs> um it was it's something that I needed though. I needed, like I said, I was like I know that I would get lazy. And I wouldn't, I'd be like, oh, I got that. I can just do this, Joe. I, I ain't got to work. This going it's gonna take me home. Like, I ain't even gotta, you know what I mean? I would get lazy. This is gonna force me to write. And I've already been writing. Bro, I haven't I haven't performed in two weeks. Oh, because of the car situation. You you haven't like Phantom or anything like that? The car. I didn't I when I tell you <laughs> I was in the pits. Yeah. Like my girl was like, Don't you want to at least go to a show? I was just like, nah. Like. I need to like, let me just feel this. You know what I mean? Like, oh man, you know? you're going through their emotions. Yeah. So it was, but that was on, on top of just life in general. So those two things on top of life, I was just like, I'm gonna just chill for these two weeks. But yeah, I mean, this coming week, I'm back in action. But uh, you're yeah. able to recoup. You're able to re-energize while in the pits. Uh, I trust me. I know. I know the pits. I'm very <laughs> familiar with the pits. <laughs> it's. I'm surprised I didn't see you there. Um, <laughs> hey, what's going on, buddy? You in the pits? Yeah, <laughs> Welcome to the pits. <laughs> You're usually one of my lifelines when I'm in the pits. <laughs> let, me, let me message someone real quick. I need the ladder. Um, like, <laughs> I need the ladder. Yeah. No. Sometimes, man. That's uh. It's it's good to go through uh, things like that in those situations, and it's good to also recognize like to so. I feel like a lot of times people have this idea of like, oh, you got to just keep pushing through it, keep pushing through it, which is yeah. good in some ways. And that's actually what I was doing through this week. Um, but there's also times where it's like, yeah, just, just hang back. Yeah. You don't have to force yourself to go out or try to force yourself to uh, feel like positive emotions if you're not just feeling it sort of thing, like yeah. process it or whatever. Um, I This week, uh, less so because uh, it, it, was, it wasn't so motivated of like being in the pits so much. It was more so uh, just feeling like uh, you should go out. You should go out sort of thing when not really feeling like going out. And that result, that like snowballed and something good. Uh, like I, I hit a mic slash shows each day this week. Nice. So like from Monday through Friday, just perform the whole time. Um, yeah. Tonight may hit up a show too, just do like a guest thing. But so I've been in that way. I've been the, uh, the comedy pits. Uh, I was sent to like... <laughs> Started out like being like, oh, yeah, I really don't want to do this. Even to the point where you're like, you're at the venue and it's just like, oh, I shouldn't be here right now. I really shouldn't. I have really you ever, shouldn't have here. you ever done that? I, I've done it, right? I've done it. Have you ever go uh, to a venue and just leave and not even go in? No, I don't think <laughs> so. I don't think I've so. Done that. I've done. I'd be like, 
I look at it and I'd be like, mm, I just don't feel it. And I leave. I've done that before. I said, um, maybe I have it. Like, I'm, I think there's been times where like I've showed up early to like someone's show, just say like, hello, like, hey, I'm supporting you in this way. However, I can't stay for the show. Yeah. <laughs> I have wrestling to watch. Um, so <laughs> I've definitely have done that. But usually like if I'm there, the hardest part for me is always like the travel of like getting there. So if I'm already there, it's like, all right, just stick around. Yeah. Yeah. Like Tuesday, it was like, I, uh, I hit up the grape room, which is like a drive. Um, and while I was there, like before you get on stage, I was like, I not even like out of like sadness or anything. I was just like, I, I, I don't even want to say these things. <laughs> uh, these words are about to come out. I have no real enthusiasm about them. And then you hit the stage and it's like, all right, I'm back. <laughs> the stage was my ladder. I was like, all right, well, I'm, I'm back out here. Yeah. Um, thunder supplies. I was like, all right, that's the KG was in the building. Um, so th- this has been a, a comedy heavy week um, in that sense. That's been cool. Uh, yesterday, because um, I wanted to keep up the, the pattern, but there was no, not a lot of mics in um, the area. I was supposed to meet a friend in Paoli. Shout out to Paoli. Um, and then I found a coffee shop. A uh, cup of dreams. Shout out to them. They uh, they've been advertising that they hold open mics like every third Friday or something like that. And I was like, oh, all right, I'll hit up Cup of Dreams. That's and hilarious. It's, yeah, it's like a like a music mic situation. Yeah. Hit it up sort of thing. I go there and it's literally three staff members. And uh, I was like, oh, are you are you are you guys going to do the open mic? And they're like. Well, yeah, we we were we did a song earlier, but since you're here, I'll, I'll do a song, and <laughs> then you could go up when you're comfortable. Uh, so that's exactly what happened. Uh, I they did a song. Uh, Lily, shout out to Lily. She did a song. She was one of the workers there, and then I went up and uh, did nine minutes for the <laughs> staff of Cup of Dreams. Yo, that, I ain't gonna lie. That, those sets be fun, yo. Uh, not this one. Uh, so, no, it was it was more. It turned into more of a conversation because I started like I did like a little bit of like ha ha hello hello, and I started doing the bits. And Grant, mind you, the staff is like two ninth graders from Conestoga High School. Uh, so like I would do jokes about like uh like working at CBS, <laughs> and then they're like, hey, I work a couple dreams. Like it just it wasn't really. So it, it pretty much developed in just uh, me doing a Q and A with the staff. And asking how they felt about their boss, and uh, well, I got a rep in. I did get a rep in, so I did. I was able to do all five days this week. But yeah, that that was an interesting, interesting set. Every single set you do, you get better, and you learn the most from the worst sets. So I think that was perfect. I would, I would love to do a nine minute set at Cup of Dreams right now. I would love that. <laughs> know that every third Friday they're available. Jen, she's trying to get more people to come through. I was like, I'll, I'll let my comedy people know about it. Uh, <laughs> no microphone either, just a rug. <laughs> you, so there was no mic. There was a rug. So you just had to scream. So this is pretty much for poets. It was a small enough room where I could talk just like I'm talking now, and they got it. <laughs> Eric will whisper his jokes. <laughs> Some of them, yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, when you were, when you were there, did you post your location? I did not. I did not. I, I, I had to somewhat make an effort to not live post my location because we've been we've been seeing some things happening with people posting their locations and uh, some some not so great ramifications happening afterwards. Yeah. Uh, have you have you heard about all this, Mom? Yeah, man. First of all, I want to say rest in peace to P and B Rock. You know what I'm saying? Great Philadelphia musician, artist, rapper, singer, all of that. You know what I mean? Um, situation was crazy you know what i mean he lost his life at roscoe's chicken and waffles in la somebody came and robbed him and, and killed him right there in the and, restaurant and what was the the situation with this from what i'm gathering the person he was with um posted like hey we're here we're enjoying the food and you have the uh, i the, you can post where you're at your location and that's what they did while they were there leading to the robbers knowing where uh, he was yeah, like I thought that was a misstep on a part of a lot of people. They were trying to blame his, I guess his girlfriend posted that she was, she posted a picture of her food at Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles. Uh, and okay. people were like, you shouldn't do that. That got him killed. And I and, and I don't think that's the case no, at all. Not that, at all. Yeah. Like, that, first of all, that don't mean that he's there. And and that don't mean that you, you think that somebody 
is looking to rob and kill PNB Rock City, just feverishly watching her stories and on, on, on go. And no, there were people at this restaurant. Somebody seen him, people outside the restaurant, somebody seen him pull up. You don't think maybe they gave the drop? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Or, I think people are always just kind of looking for uh, a scapegoat in those situations. And uh, it's like, oh, well, she posted it. So that's just and it's it's not the first time we're seeing this with rappers in particular where they post their location and some whether it be a robbery or uh, unfortunately like murders happen so i think people are just kind of going along with that trend um which is rough because you know, on, on her side of it she just lost someone that she's close with um and people are putting it on her and perhaps even she feels some guilt about that i, I hope she she doesn't hope she's all right and all that stuff um there there was another one I feel like there was another rapper. Um, well, not a rap, well, definitely not a rapper, but like uh, Colby Covington, the UFC fighter. He had the exact same thing uh, where he he was with like a few podcasters and they posted that they were at some um, steakhouse in Florida. Yeah. And that led to the person that he just got into a, a UFC sanctioned fight with. And he's had this bad blood with Jorge Masvidal uh, coming to the steak shop and attacking him. Nice. And, yeah, it was a whole thing, man. I'm surprised we didn't cover it when it happened. What um, was this? This did we cover this? I don't. I don't think so. I, I sometimes I, I refrain from some of my UFC news. Uh, sorry. But that's insane. Yeah, so, yeah. So Hori Moswell, he actually got charged for it, um, and he's facing like criminal charges, like Colby Covington press charges, and bro, like they had an actual 25 minute fight, UFC pay per view. So like they were in the cage. And Kobe won. Kobe won via his wrestling. But Kobe, Kobe was talking greasy about yeah. Rory Masvidal the whole time. It was a huge buildup. They had all his bad blood. They used to be teammates and all that stuff. Um, and then he pretty much, he won. Kobe won, like, easily, but just through his wrestling skills. Yeah. Jorge Masvidal showed up maybe a week after the fight during this uh, the steakhouse incident. Attacked him. He came up from behind, too. It wasn't even, like, on some, like, yeah, yeah. it was it was kind of, it was a cornball move. Um and now he's facing charges and allegedly Colby Covington uh, is uh, facing some sort of a uh, uh, medical conditions to this as well. So um, that's crazy. Yeah. So that's so the thing. Time. Yeah. Posting the location, man. It's all over the place. And I don't know about Colby because like you were just a UFC fighter. That's not, they say being a rapper is the most dangerous job in the world. Right. But you're a target immediately. Right. Um, when you are, so like there's a, there's a there's a guide. It's it's so sad that I know this and that there is a thing. There's a guide to survive Philly, right? And it's like a list of things to do to stay safe. Like don't don't uh don't drive with your hoodie on. Don't drive with a hoodie on. Because you're parallel, your vision, you can't see the size of you. So people can run up on you. Like say you had a light and your hoodie on, somebody can run up on you, you can't see them coming. That's one of the things. Don't uh -huh. post. Your, don't post your location. That's one of the things. Don't sit in a parked car. These like these are these are these are things to do to survive Philadelphia. Like this is a list to stay uh -huh. safe. So, posting your location as somebody. So this is the thing. Posting your location as somebody that has beef, as a rapper, as somebody with money, it's not a good thing to do. But he didn't. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. Like. His girl just posted her plate. That's that's not. She's having a nice evening. The, yeah. the bigger issue is why are these black men coming into this? <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm awake now. I'm, I'm out the pits. I'm, I'm vibrant. Today. Yeah. Um, why? Are, the biggest issue is why are why are these men? I said black men like I knew it was a black person that was racist. But why are these mm -hmm. men? Why, why are these? Men, I'm conditioned. I'm conditioned. Okay, it's because it's because slavery. No, it's not my fault. But uh, <laughs> Anytime, well, next time is, you face like some sort of like a uh, racist moment from a white person or right aid, they're gonna be like, "Hey, it's due to slavery. It's due to slavery. <laughs> I'm conditioned this way. Oh, Let we, us be." We, we've been calling you niggas for a long time. It's not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> but what I'm saying is the bigger issue. I don't think it's her stories. The bigger issue is why are these men running up? robbing people and killing them in broad daylight like this is yeah no man you and then this, 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 this that's i think that's the bigger thing people need to be mad at these people you should be mad at the person that's grieving somebody that just witnessed their kid's father dying like what that's what you're going to attack and come on man i think it's easier for some people it's all conditioning thanks so just like you on both oh, sides it's, of that it's it's slavery 
Yeah, that's uh, I, I root everything down to slavery. I like if I stub my toe, I'm like ah, slavery. Uh, slavery. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's conditioning. Like even down to like killing broad daylight, it's a senseless uh, act. Um, and maybe some people don't necessarily see it as senseless because they may have their the reasons for it. Um, but all in all, I, it's it's a senseless thing due to conditioning that uh, may give reason to that, give valid reason to doing something that's unnecessary like that. Just like I think it's conditioning to want to blame uh, the person that they're with uh, for adding the location on a social media app um, right. as to why someone may have been shot. People are just kind of looking for for reasons on those. So I, 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 I post my location, but um, one, my enemies come find me. I'm joking. Don't come find me. Um, I say it's like, oh, I don't actually have enemies, but I'm like, damn, I may have some enemies. Uh, my right. Delaware enemies, please stay away. I, uh, I think something that people could do as a workaround, if they want to uh, tag the locations uh, for their social media uh, presence and all that stuff, do it afterwards. Don't do it while you're actually there. If you're, if you're a rapper uh, with the chains or if you're a, a UFC fighter with the elbows and all that stuff, wait until you come home and then post whatever you did. And then if people show up with the Ugiaga block and all that stuff, you're not going to be there. You're going to be home. So that's, that's something that I think could be helpful. That's why uh, Kim Kardashian you know, was her. She don't post her location no more because she did that in Paris and got robbed. Oh, my God. I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's what happened. Like and me, you know me. Like when I'm in the comedy streets, I'm 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 always posting my location. Like always, you know what I mean? Do I change now, or do I just do I wait till I leave? I don't know. Like I I'm just just broke ass comedian. Like you know I'm not like yeah. People are people are out there, man. They're they're not just looking to steal your jokes. They may want to like <laughs> they want they may want to get you. Uh, my my thing because I post locations whatever I'm doing like shows whatever um usually just like to give a shout out to whatever venue i was in and always just like kind of like give credit to like oh this is a spot that was able to put me up and all that my thing is that i never do it while i'm at the location because it's i have a hard time multitasking that way like whether i'm prepping up to get on stage or afterwards and i'm watching people sets i don't really do the posting thing until i get home afterwards i almost treat like a chore like if i'm on something usually like i'll post something like at midnight it's like, all right, well, I'm back home now. It's right before bed. I just post it up. And uh, if they want to try to catch me, too late. Too late, man. They, they, they should have came about uh, two hours before when I was getting busy on stage. Uh, <laughs> so if you're looking for Kirk at midnight, he's at home. Uh. Damn. All right. I suppose I gave my... I, I don't <laughs> keep that. I'm, I'm out in the streets at midnight. Uh, please please leave me be. Uh, please. Uh, I'm out in the streets. <laughs> it's, I'm out in, yeah, if you try to get me, know that there's a good chance I'm in the pits. Please, please. I'm, I may be like, yo, please get me. <laughs> I'm in the pits. Please get me. Finally, you're here. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, I broke a Philly rule the other day. I was in Manyunk, chilling in my car. Shout out to the Honda, the spaceship. And I had the windows down, not even like driving. I was like, well, let me l- relax real quick uh, while I send this message. And I caught myself midway through of like, all right, maybe don't have your windows down in an isolated not even parking lot, just like a random street in Manyunk. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. At nighttime, somebody could just put the gun right on your face, right through your right through your window. What you gonna do? You gonna give them everything? I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna play dumb and be like, oh, you're looking for the 7-Eleven. If you go down market, like, <laughs> like I have tactics. Yeah. Good luck good for it. Good luck with those tactics. Uh, I'm gonna try, man. I am going to try. Yeah. Uh, I just, you know, everybody. Yeah. You know, I just I just I just hope that 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 um. His girlfriend, you know, she finds peace and people, she hopes she deletes all her social media and just find peace because people are going to find anything to complain about. Um, you know, like you see like the whole Little Mermaid thing, people complaining about that. Bro, I forgot about Little Mermaid because this, when this first happened, it was like two years ago when they were like doing the production, pre-production and like they did casting and uh, people... I have two different takes on it because I know it was a thing where I was making news or people were, were talking about it and people were talking about the idea that people were complaining about it. Um, and then I started to see it again, I guess, because the trailer just dropped yeah. and it's the same thing. I want to ask you this and before, before I get into it, but for those of you that don't know, they uh, remade uh, The Little Mermaid into a live action and they casted, uh, is it Haley Berry? Haley Bailey. Haley Bailey. That's a name. Uh, Haley Bailey. 
Really? That's the name? Haley Bailey? Yeah, it's Chloe, Chloe Bailey's sister. Come on, man. Who, who's Chloe? Uh, either way, they casted Haley Bailey. Oh, oh, Chloe Bailey? Oh, God. I'm going to blow your mind. Chloe Bailey's like the finest thing out right now. <laughs> Chloe, is, is she like a, is she like in the live action version of Pinocchio? Who's Chloe, Chloe Bailey? Chloe Bailey and Haley Bailey are sisters. They've been in the industry for a long time. They're Beyonce's protégés, signed to Beyonce. Oh. They're like the generation right under us. So you might not know like the, the kids know her. Like she, bro, I know iCarly, so I, I know I know what's going on with the youth, bro. No, but they're not even like. No, you should know who the Baileys are. Come on, man. Chris Pratt. If you could pull up a, a photo or a description of Chloe Bailey, because I know Haley Bailey from Little Mermaid, uh, but Chloe Bailey, I, I don't know what that that means. Chloe Bailey, she the one that shut the internet down with the busted challenge last year, and she's you a kid. Like, no, they're adults. They're both adults. Oh, okay. I thought you said younger general. Oh, I, yeah, we're old. But like, <laughs> but like 20, 21, 22. Okay. You know. Chloe Bailey. Okay. I, I don't know, but uh, shout out to her and Beyonce. Um, so yeah. Haley Bailey, she's in this uh, and they cast her. Uh, she's black and uh, people um, are allegedly upset um, are making uh, comments about uh, someone black being a little mermaid because the cartoon was a white fish. Um, so they, um, people want to get an idea. So uh, what do you, what's your take on this before, before I go off, before, I, before I climb out the pits and let you know what I'm feeling, what, what, are, what are you feeling? Um, it's ridiculous. It's a car. It was a cartoon and they picked the best performer to play it. Okay. What color she is like. It, it, Bill, this is to me. Check this out. If mm. Miller memory came out and if she had been white. No black person would have said anything. If they would have made, if they, if they, they would have made the Jamaican crab would have became Asian, nobody would have said anything. We don't care. It's that a cartoon. Sick. Yeah. <laughs> it's a cra- I could, it's a, if, like, listen, even if it was real life, like the mermaid was a real white woman in real life and they were doing an autobiography on her life and they picked Haley Bailey to play her. Who cares? Yeah. I like, wasn't, wasn't, wasn't what was that movie that was the name was the Mexican? It wasn't, Johnny Depp, the Mexican, or something like that. One of them I'm white sure, guys. I'm sure he's played a Mexican at some point. One of them white guys. It might have been Brad Pitt. He was in a movie called The Mexican, I think. <laughs> oh, yeah. He didn't play a Mexican. It was, the, it was about a gun, him and Julia Roberts. Real, kind of an underrated movie. Very good movie. Um, <laughs> I haven't seen that in years. Damn. Thanks for reminding me about The Mexican. That was a good movie. Have you seen it? <laughs> I don't know. It, it was yeah. a while ago. It was a while ago I seen it. Like, I don't, <laughs> but yeah. But yeah, that, that's my thought. Like, it ain't. It's a movie, man. It ain't that serious. Look, it's no, it's not Chris that serious. It, Tom Cruise was the last samurai. That's true. Yeah, that one was a notable one. I think Matt Damon played a samurai recently, too. I was like, all right, you guys are kind of wilding on this one. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, so my, my take on this is that I may be in the liberal echo chamber of that. I'm not actually seeing any criticism for Little Mermaid. Like, I'm seeing people talk about there being criticism. I'm seeing people post memes from like these radical pages. Um, but I, I haven't, maybe I need to like sit down and watch Fox news for like an hour. I haven't actually heard anyone criticizing this. I've only heard people talk about the idea of there being criticism and then them kind of being uh, like fighting that, that uh, the alleged criticism. I so I, I don't know how much of this is actually prevalent um, versus like people using it as an excuse just to, voice their 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 takes so that's the beauty of twitter is <laughs> you have people directly responding to the nonsense so like i've seen the nonsense you know what i mean so like, i i tried to quickly find some of it but i can't i can't find it right now but like you would I, i've seen it and i've read it like people really didn't understand and they were upset you know, they were just like, I'm trying to think. There was a few. Like, I, I've, I have seen like People that were commenting, like, they were... People like, people were posting how angry they were. People were oh, posting oh. why they didn't think that Little Mermaid should be black. And then they were saying things like, I seen one post that said, how can Little Mermaid be black? Was it, there must have been an oil spill. Oh, Christ. All right. You know, because oil gets in your skin and changes the pigmentation of it, you know. So it's like I've I've seen that, bro. They're out here and on Facebook and Instagram, I haven't seen it. Her but Twitter, Twitter I have. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I was 
Uh, producer Pat says his wife's sister said her hair was red as in, uh, oh, I guess, yeah, I guess because the uh, Haley Bailey would not have red hair. Uh, so they're, they're more about the, the hair part of it. You tell me one black woman, they never had red hair. Shout to Pinky. Nicki Minaj had pink hair for 15 years. Yeah. Haley, Haley Bailey got, she got red weave. That's a black woman. And then somebody, look, somebody said that. Somebody said that, of course, Little Mermaid's black. It's probably one of them slaves they threw over the ships. Oh, God. I'm like, well, which side are they on? Are they making which joke are they going for on that one? They're on our side. They're, they're on our side. It's, <laughs> I might have worded it for different. Uh, it was on our side. <laughs> yeah, shout out to New New Nail. She has red hair. Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. that's. So I think there are people that actually have uh, gripes about it. I just. I, I can't help but feel like a lot of those people are, uh, well, maybe not so much. I don't know the condition of like a a producer Pat's wife, sister. Um, But it seems like there's going to be a lot of just older people that are going to have ignorant opinions and they're going to have ignorant opinions about uh, plenty of different things. And when those things happen, it's like, is it bad to just kind of like neglect it? Be like, okay, that's, kind of just radical nonsense opinions. I don't need to bring light to it. Or is it bad, uh, the, the idea of um, bringing light to it, lack of better words, like bringing it to the forefront, having it be a part of the discussion, having it be something that's attached to this children's movie now. Um, are we, is it further politicizing uh, the matter by bringing these there and uh, bringing the, the divisiveness uh, to the movie? Uh, I, I don't know if there's a right or wrong answer, uh, but that that was my approach when I saw it. One, I did not know how much of it was actually happening. And two, I was wondering why people were bringing attention to these uh, nonsensical uh, opinions about a fish. People are stupid. I'm one of them. I'm stupid. not above the stupid people. I'm I'm in the midst. No, people, <laughs> I'm a dummy. If you, I, I said this plenty of time, bro. You can say and do whatever you please. If you disagree with something, you ain't got to support it. You ain't, but to go online and just say stupid stuff is just dumb. You just don't watch the movie. Don't watch no. it. Who cares? Do you feel the same could be said for the people that are bringing up the criticisms? Like, if you don't necessarily agree with someone's let's just crazy opinion that's I, I feel is radical, um, just just don't don't bring it up. Don't have a whole post about it. Don't have it be a part of. Uh, your dialogue because you're just bringing light to that. Do you feel there's any, uh, any credence to that? No, mm. I feel like you got to speak on it. Like if we don't speak on certain things, things won't change, I guess. So it's kind of like, I'm a, so like me, for instance, I'm going to tell I'm going to give my opinion on what I think about certain things. This is that I gave my pen. I, I, I might've tweeted about little mermaid or something a couple times. But you yeah, weren't even like, talking about the race thing. You were just promoting the movie. You're just excited. Yeah, like, I can't wait to watch it. I'm going to get my popcorn and everything. I can't wait, okay? I'm going I'm to be in a mermaid costume. I'm going to have no shirt on. And <laughs> I'm going to have a thin body. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Dad, where's your feet? It's movie time. Stop talking. Yeah, I'm a white mermaid. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, uh, no, I, I don't know. I hear, I hear you. I hear you. But it's kind of like, I don't know, man. Like, we don't say anything. Then they go and they, people are talking anyway, so it's kind of like somebody's going to talk. I might as well get. I might as well talk. So look, my, I'm gonna speak for myself because that's all I can do. Hmm. My whole goal for what I put out there and online is to get a reaction, to get likes, comments, laughs, try to go viral. I'm a comedian. Yeah, and I said this plenty of times before. Before I was a comedian, I did not post online. Like you look at my Facebook from seven years ago. It'd be like today, my status is like Alan Massenberg is chilling. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, uh-huh. <laughs> I was insane. saying nothing. 13 years ago. <laughs> Alan Massenberg is playing basketball. Because <laughs> <laughs> you remember on Facebook when they say like, it'd be like, your name is. Yeah. People would like make statuses like, Alan is exhausted. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that, I was looking at one today. I was like, uh, Kirk may be moving back to New York sooner than he thought. <laughs> Which. I don't know why I wrote in third person. It was like they set me up for it. I was like, okay. That's how that's how it used to be set up. You know yeah. what I mean? So I could tell so people can read a story about you. So like 
Before that, I didn't say anything about nothing. But now we're in a whole thing where everybody wants to go viral. Everybody wants that attention. So everybody going to talk. That's just the world we're in. It ain't no way we're going back. No way we're going to yeah. go back. To, I like, think so you, you people, they're going to talk. So we got to talk. I think that's a part of because uh, I think and especially if you're like if you're a person that does comedy or you do any sort of like public thing, I think it makes absolute sense. Uh, you're you're commenting on what's happening, even just what we're doing right now, the podcast and all that stuff. I think it makes total sense uh, to do that. I think because I attach that idea to this as well is where I get the I kind of get the the disposition of like, well, why even why even bring it up? Because it just feels like it's attached to going viral or bringing attention to self versus actually looking for any sort of solution or any for sort of like meaningfulness uh to the dialogue of like okay that person has an opinion that's different from mine i know that i have talking points that i could use for content and that's what i'm going to post versus oh this is something i actually care about or something that i actually want to bring light to um so i think for me there, there's a little bit of a um uh, i don't, I don't want to say cynicism to it, but uh, a little bit of a, a trend um, that I, I, it kind of makes me uh, not not as attractive to having uh, what seems like kind of fake dialogue. That's what it is. Everybody wants attention. Yeah, I mean, credit Bobby. to people. That's fine. That's it. that's that's what we're doing all that stuff. That's fine. Like, I, and if I don't like it, I could just log off, which is what I do sometimes. Like, if if you know, if I don't like it, then I could just take some breaks and, and not uh, be immersed in it, sort of thing. So that's on me. People are gonna have their opinion. People going everybody wants to go, everyone wants attention, everyone wants to go viral, everybody wants to do all this other stuff. That's that's the world we live in. I mean, like I said, why you can go off. Why can't they be purists like us, Alan? Why can't if they want attention, why can't they just create jokes and then perform it live in front of people? Why can't they be pure? <laughs> I realize I'm all, an asshole for saying that. <laughs> oh no, no, no. All jokes aside, I, you I know you're just playing, but I dead ass agree. Like, yeah. I agree. <laughs> I be telling people, like I know this chick, right? She uh She's very, very funny on Facebook, right? Very funny. Like, she's quick with it. She is honest. And she came up to me one day, and she was like, yo, I think I want to do, like, comedy. And I was like, yo, you should. Like, because I can tell you, 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 you your status is, you, you think she want to do skits. So it's like, there's a lot of people who would like to do what we do, but can't and are afraid. You know what I mean? So, like, I think it's a lot of that, too. Everybody want to, you can, everybody on a podcast now. Yeah. Everybody, regular pe- people, just go to go, wake up, go to work, and then come home and do a podcast. Yeah, that's the thing, man. Uh, shout out to us for <laughs> <laughs> like continuing over four plus years. Really, shout out to us because um, I think that's podcast yeah. become the new stand up in some ways. Of like, people always kind of have it on their bucket list of like, man, I think I could do that, and one day I should do it. And you always hear people say that, and then like, it's like, well, you know, you can. Um, and that, and that's things happen in life. It's not like, yo, you're shitty for not following up on that. If you don't, whatever. Um, it's just credit to the people that do it, whether it be stand up or podcasting. Um, so yeah, man, four years strong. Would you do a podcast if you didn't do stand up? I don't think so. I mean, I, 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 it depends. I think if it was like, if I was like a, if I was like a psychologist and I was looking for some sort of outlet outside of work where I could still talk shop about psychology. Yeah, I think so. I, I, I think I, I associate podcasting so much with comedy that it's hard for me to say yes. Yeah. But I think, yeah, I, I think if there was something that I was passionate about, yeah, maybe. I don't, I don't think there. I don't think I would. Really? Like, so I, I wouldn't. I wasn't even posting like that online. Yeah. Why would I come and tell people what I think about things? Like, what, what would be the point? What am I trying to get out of it? Well, yeah, if you weren't doing stand up, you'd probably have like a different passion sort of thing. And maybe that would be what the podcast is about. I guess. But I'm I'm just thinking like before stand up, I just had a job and I was right. just working and I didn't have like I was like I like women and beer. Like I don't know. Like what would you want me to talk about? Like, yeah, that's a good podcast name right there. Uh, <laughs> women and beer. Women and beer with <laughs> Yeah, that would be wild right there, man. Um yeah, probably just talk about comedy. <laughs> right. That's. I wonder how many people start podcasts and then like do stand up afterwards. Probably a good amount, I imagine. I don't know. I, I don't. I mean, probably too many. If you're thinking of uh, starting a podcast uh, and you're listening to this, you may get inspired and all that stuff. Um, here, at proper box. We want to tell you, don't. Uh, no, uh, but you could consider it. And good luck if you do. 
And uh, with that, uh, let's get into one of our podcast uh, traditions. Uh, let's get some prop suggestions. Prop suggestions. Prop suggestions. <laughs> My prop suggestion for this one um, is a suggestion, also a shout out. Um, uh, I, I suggest that people, uh, whether you be in the Philadelphia area or if you like driving into the city, uh, check out um, uh, the, uh, what is it? The, the Punch Buggy Brewery. Punch Buggy Brewery. Um, they do, it's a, a bar um, and they host shows. John Derry is one of the, the hosts out there. Um, they do it, I believe it's every third Thursday of the month. That was one that I've been meaning to check out for a while. And uh, I took this Thursday as an opportunity just to check it out. Not on the lineup, just to sometimes I like just go and watch shows, yeah. especially like if I'm like with a buddy or whatever like that. It's like, oh, just go go see a show, support other comics. Um, this one was cool because they just they were like, yo, you want to do a few minutes? So I hopped onto that. Um, and it was able to continue my trend throughout the week of just getting on stage. And it was a cool room. It, it was nice. Good beer, uh, good location. So definitely check them out. Um, uh, Punch Buggy Brewery uh, every third Thursday of the month. Uh, so peep them. Yeah, I think I did that before the pandemic. I'm pretty sure I did. I think they've been doing it for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Good room. John runs good rooms. Runs good rooms. That's fine. Right. My suggestion is we kind of touched on it earlier, but I, my suggestion is being okay with starting over. I mm-hmm. think that people need to be okay with starting over. And for me, like I talked about was was my joke that I used to lean on for so long. I, I, I'm even I'm going a step further, Kirk. I don't want I don't even want to do. I don't want to do nothing that's over two years old. Like I don't even want to. And this I, I so what I'm going to do is I'm going to purge. I'm going to purge my stuff. I right? mean, meaning like all my stuff that's over two years old. I'm going to record it somewhere at some point. I'm just going to put it on Instagram or somewhere, YouTube or something. I'm just put it out there. I don't, I did, because I, I realized that with my joke, I, no one, not enough people heard me do that. You know what I mean? Mm. So I, I need to be okay with starting over. I, I'm, I'm going to start, start over from scratch. I think differently now. I see things differently now. I'm in a different space. I need to t- write about what's going on now. So I think that for my suggestion for people is starting over can be a fresh start. It could be a good thing. It's scary because I'm I'm telling you, Kirk, I'm about to be on stage, not killing it how yeah. I normally kill it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, you're going so there with the perspective of the pits. You have some new perspective now. Yeah, like I, I some things I've been some ideas I want to talk about, like. Like the idea of like my my daughters know that I love them unconditionally. Like that's a problem because uh-huh. they just do whatever, knowing I'm gonna still love them. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's like uh-huh. I got these ideas that I want to talk about, and I just but I never I've been leaning on a lot of jokes. I'm starting over. I suggest everyone, whatever you're thinking about in life, a fresh start starting over is a good thing. I mean, not, it's it's fear. I'm afraid, so I know I gotta do it. What was it? Uh, what, what, what was it? The whole saying uh, on the other side of fear is a uh, joy. I think that's something yeah, that once some, some, somebody told me. Yeah, maybe yeah, so it may have been you. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I said that to you. I think I'm paraphrasing <laughs> you right now. Uh-huh. Yeah, I mean, I think I, on the other side of fear is like what you want. Every on the other side of fear is happiness, joy, everything. You that's what you want. You got to go over that fence. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That's and that's that's advice that uh, a suggestion I, I could use for myself. Um, I was talking to someone about this. I think. There a lot of times, uh, whether usually for mics, less so for shows, because shows you want to, you do want to kill typically. Um, however, you still want to go over that hump of trying out new things as well. Um, I, I was talking to someone about the idea of uh, they they didn't like that uh, saying things that they have already said on stage. Like they're getting to the point of like they don't want to, they don't want people hearing the things that they know that they've already heard, uh, particularly yes. the mics. And I get that. I also get the idea of like, say, whether like you haven't been on stage in a while or you you more so just want to perform than excel, uh, and at, which I think there is a difference. Um, sometimes it can be just comforting, which I realize is is not necessarily the best thing. Sometimes it's just be comforting like, oh, yeah, I'm going to do stuff that I know works not only because I know it works, because this is what's bringing me joy right now. Yes. Of like, oh no, like I, this is something that I would I would like in my life right now to like to be able to perform. Um, but I think you cross a line, especially if you're trying to excel um, in a field where you're going to want to go beyond that comfort 
and really try to like dig into like where you're at right now and see what's funny right now versus relying on what you thought was funny and polished two years ago or so. So mm-hmm. it, it's a balance, man. I credit you for uh, look, looking to go over that hurdle. That's a big one. It has to happen, man. I've been in like this. I know I got funny jokes, man, that I've been, but I've been leaning on them. And it's a lot of ideas that I got. Yeah, I'm about to, I'm about to just do ground, ground stuff from the ground. Now. I got, like, I'm not going like go up there and bomb. Like, I, I'm good. Uh-huh. But like, I was falling in love with. So I love comedy. Like, I love everything about comedy. But I was falling in love with people's reactions, and as opposed to falling in love with what just with what I produce and what I come up with. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. Like, and I think a lot of people in entertainment they fall in love with results instead of the journey yeah. and it and it, they start cheating or start cheating themselves like mm-hmm. i know a guy i know a guy you know comedy over 10 years he he takes people's ideas and like it will still a joke you know what i mean because he's 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 just trying to do everything he can this someone you know or like this someone you saw on tv i know i don't say his name though but uh-huh. um, but um but it's just kind of like he's in love with everything that comes with comedy the, the, the women, the the acknowledgement, but not in love with the the journey. You know what I mean? I got to get back. Like I I love this. Like I love. I it sounds weird, but I dead ass love being an unknown broke comedian. Like I I enjoy yeah. this a little bit. Like I like to go outside of clubs and watch people go into the comedy club, not knowing I'm about to go up there and kill it. I ain't yeah. gonna do that ten years from now. You know what I'm saying? Right. That is a cool feeling of like <laughs> of like them asking them asking you about information about the show. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, have a seat right there. <laughs> and then you go on stage, no, they'd be like, no. that's the guy that sent me. Yeah, no, that is a that is a fun feeling. I do feel like a spy whenever I do that. <laughs> uh like they're they're like like they'll be like cracking jokes next to you, sort of thing. And you're like, Oh, I have prepared stuff. <laughs> it you is nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, I mean, I'm just yeah, I'm, I'm I gotta get back to the essence of because I love this shit, bro. You know what I mean? And I and I realize that like I'm not just in love with the response I get either. You're not a reward seeker. You're not one of the reward seekers that we were talking about. That's why that's why my girl was like, yo, go to these shows, go do that. You might feel better. I was like, no. Like I don't want I don't want to go on stage, kill it, and then everybody be like, yeah, no. Like I need to get here so I can go higher. Like I I, I know that. So I'm gonna do okay. that. I'm working on it. You ever <laughs> You ever, you ever, you ever been in the pits and go on stage and then bomb? Absolutely not. Uh, I'd Absolutely. Say, last time I did that, uh, you were there for it. It was at the White Swan. It was like right after my San Diego trip. Did I bomb? I well, I have different definitions of bombing. Like it wasn't like a like boo or anything like that. But it was like it was not a. It wasn't like oh, I'm trying out new things and it may be risky. It was like. <laughs> It was more so I was just like annoyed, upset, and forcing myself to go out. Um, so that was that was a fun set uh, for some people, I'm sure. But that's, yeah, man. Listen, we are. That's the thing. That's okay. I don't say that's like a, oh man, I can't believe. Like no, that's that happens sometimes yeah. when you if you're you're going through something. But yeah, it's it's not like the worst thing you learn from those things. Yeah, no, I don't think that. Uh, and I, and I and I and this is something too that I realized I haven't bombed like. I don't bomb, bro. Like, I don't... I got no... There's no way I could bomb with the jokes I have. Like, just, yeah. Like, it's, I don't care. How, I normally... Listen, I always say, I don't need to be humble in my own home. So, like, when, I, when I'm at home, I'm not online, I be I be talking my shit. Yeah. But I'm going to say I'm gonna say it right here. Because I, I know what I'm about to walk into with, with a whole new set, no jokes. I'm going to be having rough sets. I know I am. But mm-hmm. in the past three or four years, no. I ain't bomb. Bomb. Yeah. What? Things might not go how I want them exactly. But I know by bombing, like I'm that's not... my yeah. I think that's the def- I think everyone has different definitions. <laughs> I think there's times where like things, like seemingly like someone just watching a set could go like, oh wow, that was like a good set. And in the comics mind, they'll they'll consider it a bomb because they didn't feel comfortable up there, yeah. or they maybe like uh, worded something incorrectly, and that's their definition of bombing. Versus the traditional of like went up there, no reaction. Uh, they're just nervous the whole time, like the traditional bomb. I can't remember the last time I had, well, maybe yesterday. <laughs> I remember I was, shout out to Jen and uh, a couple of dreams. Um, but, but no, but even then, though, it was like I was comfortable. 
yeah it wasn't like reactions like that but it was like i was comfortable and was understanding of the situation and when you're aware of what you're doing and aware of the circumstances that's a little bit different so i hear you on that yeah man so it's gonna be a little bit of bumps in the road trying to work out this new stuff but listen i got a bunch of new i got a bunch of old jokes i can just jump into if i, I know right if needed <laughs> <laughs> so i ain't, yeah. that, I ain't that worry i I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna hang on somebody there to dry. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, don't get accused of being a joke thief. You like, if you like, start getting like nervous and like pop into butt bread real quick. <laughs> like, we saw this on NBC last Tuesday. <laughs> that one, I'll, bro. I'm telling you, I'll never tell that joke again. Yeah, rest in peace, butt bread. But that's that's yo, that, <laughs> that joke. I closed out so many shows with that joke, bro. Like, bro. Man. I- if I see, if I'm watching NBC and I hear someone start off with like, this is my impression of a Jamaican man, I will shut the TV down. I will shut the TV down. But who knows? Maybe I'm relying too much on that. But even if I do, that is such, that's just a, a fun joke that I just enjoy. <laughs> so it would be a bummer, but uh, that's, we'll see what happens. Yeah, man. So it is what it is, man. It's going to push me to be a better comedian. So that's it. That's it. So. Yeah. You know, well, I'm curious. I'm, I'm very excited to see uh, the bumps that you may run into and how you uh, overcome those bumps. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you, you will and all that. Um, my, my plan for the day after this, the reason I asked if we could record early is that I'm going to drive to Springfield to go to Raymore Flanagan's Clarence outlet because uh, uh, your boy is going to get a new sofa. Uh, I'm deciding to pull the trigger. Um, my buddy Ray and I, we were going to rent a U-Haul. I'm helping him move his thing. He's going to help me move my thing. Sounds weird. Um, but then we're gonna um unload <laughs> the sofa uh and replace this one. So that's gonna be uh, my plan for the day. You got anything going on? I gotta get my daughter's phone fixed. And then and that's and that's it. I ain't doing nothing. Tomorrow, soccer yeah, football. games. Football. I got no, you would not hate, man. It's stupid. My daughter plays soccer. They be having the soccer games on Sunday, the exact same time as the football games. The exact that's- same time. That's at one o'clock. Like, what why? That's weird. That's because I feel like a lot of the parents are they're sports oriented people, so they're going to be wanting to watch the football people. Just make it eleven. Just make it eleven. <laughs> I what? Yo, coach the team. Coach the team. Be like, yo, and then you'll have more say in it. Be like, hey, let's start this at six a.m. Honestly, that's what that's what my kids keep telling me to do. Like, you won't yeah. just be the coach. I'm like, I'm ah. not. I'm not I, would, I told them I would never, ever, ever be a coach of any of your sports ever. Why? Because I played sports all my life, and I always remember the coach's kid. They always were treated differently, and everyone looked at them side-eyed. You know what I mean? Uh. I don't want that for my kids. No matter what the coach says, it's your child. You're going to naturally favorite favorite them a little bit. You may not even notice it. Mm. I never want that for my kids. And that's, that's, that's a really good way. It's a really good thing to say when you're lazy. So, Okay. <laughs> Keep that in mind, too. Cool, man. Uh, well, nice chatting on stuff. If you're listening, uh, thank you for listening on stuff. We hope you got some information. Hope you got some inspiration. Hope you got some determination. Uh, this has been Proper Box for Kirk and Allen. Stay tuned uh, for some future episodes. And uh, yeah, thanks. Peace.